Happy Saturday. You're welcome to the Today's Woman Show. My name is Renee Kubwating, and today is going to be a very, very, very mm, naturally healthy. Um, you'll find out. We'll be right back. time for the woman on the move she's that powerful woman the woman with the drive pressing on pushing on let's see who she is good evening good evening and welcome to spectra global limited thank you and how are you i'm great all right. I'm great. So let's go in and see what you have for us. Awesome. So where are those big tables, <laughs> big drawing sheets? Um, those are prehistoric. Wow. They... I'm traditional. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> we don't work with big tables and big T squares yes, and where you have to basically lie on the table to, for, for you to draw. We don't do it. It's over 20 years we ago. Call those guys draftsmen. Uh -huh. So what's the difference between what they do and what you do here? Okay, so the, usually when people ask me this question, I just bring it to something that they, they know quite well, like the difference between a medical doctor and a nurse. The difference between an architect and um, a car technician or a draftsman, as um, you call it, is one, even in the training, okay? Architects take six years of school time to train and we are given education on every aspect of the built environment, okay? A car technician takes maximum two years of training. And secondly, um, the level of understanding of an architect. An architect does more than drawing lines and um, buildings, okay? So what we do is we have, we have understanding of what the architectural requirements and code of, of, of ethics and um, building regulations and everything are. We also have an understanding of the work of the engineers because as an architect you are on top of all the various allied professionals so you are working with structural engineers you are working with mechanical engineers you are working with electrical engineers you are working with quantity surveyors you are working with interior designers and you have to know what they are all supposed to do so that if they are making a mistake on the project since you'll be the one to be held finally um, liable you are supposed to be able to tell when they are going off so you can bring them back on track Okay, a, car a, a draftsman cannot do that. Another difference is the level of complexity of projects we can handle. Do you get disappointed when you drive through town and you see some Aye. of the structures around? Definitely, definitely. Why, why, why do you get disappointed? Because it, it can be way better. It can be way better in terms of um, just the, even the aesthetic appeal. And sometimes even when you go into um, these buildings, what the inside looks like, um, not just in terms of the beauty, but in terms of the functionality. So things like thermal comfort, things like um, in, in functionality of the spaces and so on and so forth, they can be better. People will talk about cost, so yes. they want to go to the wayside and just give a few notes to someone to draw for them. Yes. So how do you convince people that to put up a good building, the one that is safe, and have that comfort, you'd have to look for an architect. Great. What we do is beyond lines. Before an architect will even design, uh, in quote, a simple house for you, they will have to sit down with you and do a diagnostic interview with you. Who are you? What is your family like? What is your day-to-day -day routine like? Where do you work? Where, location, where, of the land. location of the land. What does the land come with? They will go to the site and find out. Sometimes you go to the site and just by mere view of what is on the land, you know that, uh-uh, this is trouble. How many workers do you have? Um, we are about 20 in all. 20? Yes. That's, that's good. So let's go around and see what some of them are doing. So yes, Moses is a car technician. So presently, what Moses is working on is the um, technical drawings of a project that we have that has been designed. So the architect does the concept and so on and so forth, and then we pass it on to the CAD technician who now details it out. So what is he doing? Francis, he is an architect, 
and he's working on um, another project. He's inspecting drawings that have been completed by a CAD technician. So before any drawings go out, it comes back to the architect and then he crosses the T's and dots all the I's. So make sure that whatever it is that was in mind is what is, what is going out. Mm, talking as if everything is easy. <laughs> um, what have been some of the challenges in doing this business? Ooh. Some of the challenges in doing this business. Um, the, one, one of the challenges is, is the mindset of the people where they don't even approach you because in their minds you're expensive. So they won't even ask. Another challenge we face in the industry is the fact that people who have good projects to work on in the country somehow think that Ghanaian architects are not up to it. So they go and bring in um, designers from South Africa, from everywhere else in the country, when we are all right here. So what I'd like to say is that um, they should give us a chance. We be it institutions, be it local business people, they should give us a chance. We know what we are doing. We are in this environment, we have been well trained and we understand what it takes. We have the creativity that it takes. Uh, this industry is male dominated. So what was the driving force for you getting into, into it? I think even the mere fact that it was male dominated was interesting to me. Because I remember when um, I said that I wanted to do architecture, every Tom, Dick and Harry was like, Karen, this is a man's thing. Number one, it's difficult. Even the course, you may not be able to finish it. And architecture students don't sleep. They don't do this. I mean, I was like, oh, OK, that's quite challenging. So I went in. So you have a lot of people watching you now. What advice would you give to them, especially those who want to start their own business? I would say that master the craft and, and, and the craft has to be good, the product has to be good. The skill that you are going out there with should be baked, it should be well honed. Uh, thank you Karen Evans Ham. You're most welcome. Our winning woman for today is a winner. She's been through so much. She's strived and pressed on through so much. And she is a winner. She's going to tell us all about it. Introducing Christine Chum. I'm so glad to have you on. You've been so busy. I've been trying to get you every week. And I finally got to you. So thank you so much for coming back again. Thank you so much. She was really. on a couple of months ago. Um, you were on Trendy Woman. That's right. Yes. Yeah, so we're talking about health and, and everything. Detoxification. That exactly. Was it. And it. today you are here to talk about you. I want to know all about you. Okay. I mean, there's always little conversations we have today. I want to hear it all. Okay. So tell us about Christine Chu. Okay. How okay. did you start? Um, I have a health background, mm -hmm. right? So my father was a doctor. He used to run 37 military hospital. My mom used to work at um, the Cocoa Board. Okay. All right. So growing up, dad wanted one of his children to be a doctor. So it was just me and my brother. One of us had to be a doctor, you know. Unfortunately for him, and maybe fortunately for me, I didn't like the sight of blood. Uh, yeah, so that, too. that, no, so me that too. did not work. So um, to compensate, I ended up doing pharmacy. So let me, yeah. even, let me introduce her, okay? <laughs> so Christine Chum is the CEO of Cedar Lane Health Food Store. She's also the CEO of Life Song Consult. She'll tell us all about it. And she's a managing partner at Life Wellness Holistic Center. That's right. That's it, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. Um, so from what you said so far, you, all of this is kind of like health, yes. health based, yeah. you know? So it's, it's in my blood, mm. you know? Um, dad had quite a cool man, I should say. So, oh, really? uh, yeah. Okay. So the work work ethic started early. Mm. He had, he had a farm. He used to wake us up on holidays at four a.m. in the morning. Four a.m. in the morning to go to, to go to the farm. 
So go I on, went palm. to St. Rose's Secondary School. I don't mm -hmm. know if you know it. It's in, it's in Aquitea. I mean, look at my palms. I've, I've, I mean, I, I'm a bit used to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, Weeding exactly. and the farming. Exactly. Yeah. But it, it instills a lot that's what I was of just going discipline. To, very a lot much of, so. I don't regret it. Very you know. much so. Yeah. Because that's, if, if I think about it now, that started so early. So mm. that's what's given me that discipline. And the I'm not afraid to work that. hard. Right. That's the right. thing. It's knowing that, you know, when you work hard, the results speak yeah, for itself. So you see yeah. the harvest. That's fantastic. Plant the seeds. Yeah. 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 So you said you, you used to work at 37. What were you doing then? Um, I did my national service before going to, um, to university and then afterwards. So I was part of the pharmacy team when I finished doing my pharmacy um, in, in tech. Um, so came back to 37 worked in the pharmacy department, um, mostly um, the, the main pharmaceutical store mm -hmm. that provides all the equipment and the drugs, etc., okay. to the rest of the hospital. Okay. And so what we noticed, I remember once we noticed that every time we send, um, it was very difficult to keep track of some of the things that we sent to different departments, mm. right? So, of course, the boss being my dad, we had a little conversation and um, I just instigated so and this is we set you up. Noticed. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it had been it had been there before I came, but I'm I'm very proactive. Mm. So I'm like, you know what? We need to set up Work our own, um, like a retail pharmacy. Okay. In the hospital. Okay. So that retail pharmacy in, in 37, that was me. Wow. And when we set it cheers up, oh, cheers! Because <laughs> it was cheers. it was hard work. Wow! Congratulations. <laughs> it was hard work. And this and is a I lovely remember. cocktail from the one-to-one -one bar here at the Moving Pick Hotel. Okay. Mm. Mm. It's a good one. Yummy. Very, very sweet. It's a good one. Mm. Really lovely. Mm -hmm. And I remember the first, when we finished setting it up, of course, I, we needed to prove, I needed to prove that it needed to work. So my first shift was 36 hours. What? Because it was supposed to be a 24-hour pharmacy. Because at any time, any department would need either equipment or drugs, etc. 36 hours? 36 hours. I did one day and then the next day, you know, before, because it was the, f it, we'd started and we were now trying to get the people to do the shifts, etc. So, uh, so I opened my big mouth, yeah. I did a 36 hour shift, wow, never done wow, it again after wow, that, yeah, wow. but that, that, that was something. You know, because it was set up and in the accident. It can, mm. it can. Mm. You when know, you need to, you when can you need do to, it. you can. I right. mean, our body has so much reserves. Mm. You know, and we are mm. more powerful than we think. Right. You know. Right. So. so I'm just wondering. I mean, because like you know, your father was a medical doctor. Mm -hmm. You started working in a hospital. Mm -hmm. Pharmacy. You did farm. Mm -hmm. well, did pharma pharmacy. Yeah. You did pharmacy. Mm -hmm. You worked in the pharmaceutical industry mm -hmm. for such a long time. Mm -hmm. So how come now Cedar Lane Health Foods? So the last time you okay. came, we were talking about detoxification. That's right. We were talking about natural, natural things. Yeah. You are a vegetarian. I'm a vegetarian. I mean, I, I want us to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> I get this I, reaction no, all no, no, the when time. When I read your profile, and, then there's that, and, and vegetarian since 2017, so yeah. that's for the past two years, yes. no meat, yeah. no fish. No. Well, but how can you, what are you enjoying? No, I'm, I'm sorry to put it this way. But no, no, like, no, no, no. I, I get it all the time. Okay, let me, let me give you guys some examples. Okay. Um, red red plantain and beans plantain and beans mm -hmm. it's vegetarian yes yes yeah. well, there's well, no meat there's no meat but within the stew you can put fish okay so I don't put fish okay okay, okay. so that's vegetarian yes my contemporary and up him or yam mm -hmm. it's vegetarian. vegetarian no sardine nope. no momone nope Okay. Because what, what we need to remember is that we can always substitute. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I don't do dairy so as protein, well. So the protein. So my protein. So beans. let me let me let me ask you. Protein beans. Okay. You can even get proteins in leafy green vegetables. All right. Okay. There's that um, mindset that you can only get protein from meat. Yeah. Or milk. Or milk and calcium from milk. Mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. The cow. Mm -hmm. Big bones. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cows oh, yeah, are yeah, okay. huge. You finished, but I'm already thinking. Cows are huge, yeah, big yeah, bones, and strong. And strong. Yeah. When the cows wean their calves, do they drink milk? No. What do they eat? Leaves, green grass. They eat grass. Mm. So how are their bones so strong and big? They are animals. When they don't drink milk. Okay, let's not start this. Do you see? <laughs> 
They get it from the grass. No, are you sure? Don't you think they are created like that as the creatures they are? Elephants. Mm -hmm. What do they eat? Don't they eat meat? I don't know. They eat, they eat grass as well. They are vegetarians. They are massive. Okay. Giraffes. Okay. Okay. Rhinoceroses. Do you see what I mean? Yes. The big animals. So that concept of we need strong bones, we have to drink milk, you know. But then apart from that, the flavor. The flavor the of? The flavor of, of, like, you know, like, you know, your meals, like soups, for example. Okay. okay? And, and, and also, I'm also thinking about Ghanaian foods. Okay. You know, I mean, we I eat a lot, yeah. I right? eat a lot and of Ghanaian foods. foods. Yeah. Our yeah. foods, like, yeah. you know, the, sometimes even the, the different kinds of meats we use. Flavors the food. Do you understand? Okay. I so mean, sometimes you can it's have. A, it's a mindset. It's a mindset. Before I turned vegetarian, I used to cook with my meats. Mm -hmm. I used to cook. My your children goat loved. Meat, I used your, to use all of that. Your the goat with your different exactly. Meats. But to be fair, to be fair, I'll tell you this now. To be fair, I wasn't a big beef eater. Yeah, me too. You know, mm -hmm. and also I think because my dad was a massive, massive meat eater, mm. massive. So we learned how to cook with with meat. Mm. All right. So I had to learn how to do the substitutions, all right? So I still love my okro and banku. I still do my soups. I eat yeah, but with everything. Water. Okay, so the okro, it's okro, it's garden eggs. I, I love mushrooms, mm. so a lot of yeah. my foods have lots yeah, of so mushrooms. Yeah, so what gives it the flavor? Because, for okay. example, I, I like to use, of course, garlic ginger, that's vegetarian, garlic but then the ginger. shrimp, no, like so the dry fish. fish. So the... we have things called um, liquid aminos. I use, ah, uh, sometimes okay. I use, um, But those are those know, MSGs? No, 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 no. So okay. it's all natural. So your okay. garlics, your gingers, your dawa dawa. Right, okay? right. Yeah. Those are all natural plant-based Seasonings. And it gives it gives a flavor. That's all you need. You need to and just learn how to substitute. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to do you a, a vegetarian <laughs> Ghanaian meal, and you must promise okay, to eat okay. it. Okay, what I like, <laughs> I, I love, love, love ibunu ibunu green green. You I like, that. I like the but the, but That's but it. no but the but the meat and everything is it's what so, makes it so. So I'll just leave that to you. Okay, I'll just okay. leave that to you. Okay. Now I'm reading <laughs> here that you're the co-founder. Um, you actually brought the whole hearing. Uh, um, the Haas Hearing Centre. Wow, to yeah, Ghana. Yeah, Tell us yeah. about that. Okay. Um, I was working in 37 at that time, mm -hmm. and a group of um, South Africans had come into the, the country, and they were looking to, to set up, mm -hmm. you know. So, um, actually, they, 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 they found me. They were looking for a pharmacist, right? Okay. So, they found me. We had a few meetings, and this is what they wanted to do. They and wanted the time to bring, was needed? Mm -hmm. Yes, there was not really a... a, a fully based hearing center in Ghana, mm, okay. you know. Um, yeah, so <laughs> had a few meetings here, had a few meetings in SA, had to do the audiology course, the training. You did it yourself? Yes, yes, yeah. Um, yeah, so I can read, I can test and read an audiology oh. chart, you know. And what we ended up doing, I remember when we, we started, I did like a free, I said, you know what, this day, we're doing free tests. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget it. The line, the line, the queue came all the way out of the car park down the road. People who had problems. People who had problems hearing. Really? And it just, you know, highlighted the problem. But I read somewhere that sometimes people don't even know that they have a problem That's hearing. That's the issue. So how did they know? That's the issue, you know, because the things that, you know, deep down, they, they know. Um, some of the tests are, you're sitting there, you're in a space and there's a lot of loud music, you know, and you don't seem to Mm. You don't seem to or react. You see people react in a way, and, and you don't. And then why. you you don't right. realize what's right. going on. Somebody's talking to you on one side, you know. You're not reacting. Yeah. Somebody calls you. You're not reacting. Mm. Sometimes too, it's not just a complete hearing loss, but you know, um, it's it's not a total hearing right. loss. You you just can't yeah. hear properly. It's a, bit fuzzy. it's a little fuzzy. Okay. You're not hearing properly. You're shouting. People are telling you, it's like, why are you ah. shouting? Because okay. you have to hear yourself. When you've got right. good hearing, when you speak normally, you, know. you, you hear yourself. Oh, wow, okay. Do you see? Yeah. So even when your ears are blocked with wax, sometimes people will tell you, why are you shouting? You're talking too mm. loudly. Because you have to talk louder to be able to hear right. yourself because right. your ears are blocked. Okay. Or you have a cold, etc. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. And some of the things do we realize, 
Um, people had meningitis. Mm. People who had meningitis, some of what causes that, you know, you wow. get hearing loss. But was it a treatment that was affordable for Ghana? Um, we had different ranges, you know, we had different ranges. So it wasn't, um, it was a, and it was an SA company that the equipment came from Switzerland. It was quite uh, a high market um, um, hearing, hearing products, but we tried to make the testing um, affordable and then have different ranges for the okay. actual aids. Okay. I mean, the highest spectrum you could use, a, had, it was remote controlled. Oh, wow. Exactly. Wow. You know. And is it still going on? It's still going on. Um, I left I left Haas, I left it for them, I think, in 2000. Yeah, but the center is still there. But for me, the it's also so there. interesting and amazing that, I mean, you grew up in, like, like I mean, medicine, yeah. you did pharmacy, you worked in a hospital, you I worked know. in pharmacy, everything. Yeah. And now you're talking about just plants and natural things. <laughs> and, and, I and, you have, and I think it's, it's very, very interesting because I have met you a couple of times. Yeah. I've spoken to you on different things. Yeah. You always talk about like side effects yes. of like, you know, drugs, like yes. medication. Yes. You talk about the natural. And and if I must say, mm. I think you look amazing for your age. Oh, bless you. I won't you. tell everybody your age. <laughs> I won't tell them. But your skin oh, glows. Thank you, you have thank you, beautiful thank you. skin. You don't need too much makeup. I'm a makeup artist. You know, I know okay. you don't need too much on okay. your skin. And that is very, very, well, ladies, one tip. When you have very, very good skin, mm. that is your foundation. You don't need mm. too much cosmetics. You don't need too much, you know, you don't need to That's put too to much know. if you have good skin. So good take care of your skin yeah. and wear less makeup. makeup. It's really important. But, I mean, I, I've seen you a couple of times. Okay. And I think every time I see you, you're like, Unless there's a secret, <laughs> maybe there's something you're not I'll tell, telling. I'll now. tell you what it is. Tell me. It's water. Oh, it's water. You know, our bodies. You know, we're we're in this we're in this life to survive. Mm -hmm. We're in this life to live. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what your body is doing is that it's making sure that you live, mm -hmm. that you survive, mm -hmm. that you thrive. Mm -hmm. Okay. The first thing your body needs is air. Air, okay. is air. Yes, of course, you need to breathe. You need to yeah. breathe. Yeah. Now, if you don't have air for a few hours, of course, you will yes, die. Yes. Okay. Yes. The second thing the body needs is water. Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. Seventy percent of our body is made up of water, mm -hmm. so the blood has to move. It's liquid. Things are moving right. around. Yeah. You can survive a few days, few days With no without water. water. Complete. Few days. The third is food. Mm. You can go weeks without food. Mm. Do you right, see? Right. So if we're looking at how the body needs to survive, it's air first, water, it's water second, food. before yeah, food. So not air, food, water. No. Oh, not air, food, mineral. No, you see what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> it's water. Mm, it's okay, water. Okay. All right. And that actually will show, like, you know, in the glow and everything. And everything. The beauty. You see, and what other people, sometimes when people want to lose weight, they're like, you know what, I'm not going to eat. What, what happens with that is your body now thinks that you're going to starve it. So now it starts holding on to everything that it can. So you should eat more you're when not you going want to, to diet. You're not going you want to, to lose weight. When you want to lose weight, you must eat regularly. Well, well, we'll have a private consultation we'll do, on we'll that do later. That. We'll, do that. we'll do that later. Really? <laughs> yes. You have to eat. No, yes, of course you eat. But then, you know, you can just minimize it and just eat. Yeah, quiet. but we've got, sometimes we've got clients who, twice a day. Mm. And sometimes it's like, um, last meal is 7 p.m. in the, in the in evening. The evening. Mm -hmm. They sleep fast, not have breakfast will not eat again till about two, three in the afternoon. Mm. Look at that time so period. Is, yes, Look at that time yes, period. Yes, you yes. haven't nourished your body. Yeah. You haven't no, fed but what your about body drinking, it, drinking water and all of that? Water is fine. Okay. I've had days when I've been ill and all I've, all I've done is coconut water. Okay. And the next day I'm, I'm back. And the Just coconut water back. is good? Oh, coconut water is the best thing ever. Thank you God for coconuts in Ghana. But coconut water has electrolytes. It's the mm. only thing, if you're st ever stuck on a desert island, they can use coconut water that can be infused straight into your bloodstream. Really? Yes. So what, what I, mean, you're, I mean, look, you're passionate. You're passionate about all this nature and plant. What yeah. led you um, in that pathway? Okay. You know, when, when I, can, I can say that I've, I've kind of now find my purpose, you know. Okay. Everything that's happened in my life has been a direction to what you this do. place that I am now. And sometimes when I look back at it, when I did my thesis, 
-hmm. when I was doing my pharmacy mm -hmm. in plant medicine. Wow. In plant and medicine. You didn't know. I had no idea. You didn't know. And you were not interested didn't. in I wasn't, that at, time. at that time, I wanted to do cosmetology. <laughs> I wanted to use the plants and you extract the, all the essential oils and the perfumes Colors and do soaps and, and stuff like that. That was the plan, you know. So now, after doing, doing the pharmacy, um, I've, I've practiced the pharmacy. For me, the time that I was practicing, it was a lot of, it was the, the side effects, drug interactions that was always, it was always an issue for me, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So having an opportunity to maybe have the same things. So are you saying that with the natural, uh, you know, um, um, It's products. minimal. It's, it's minimal because what we're trying to do is, what we're trying to teach is food is medicine. Mm, food okay, is so what you food eat. Is, it's is what, really you, what, it's you, what are. you eat. You, you've read that book. You are what you eat. You yes, are, you're yes, what yes. you eat. Food is medicine. So, an example: I need to eat, like I said, to survive. Mm. My body needs to thrive. So, instead of taking mm, that donut that's full of sugar and stuff, maybe I'll have something else. That's a little bit more natural. I'll but have then a have you noticed that sometimes food, natural, have... natural, it, it, it's, it's sad. But sometimes what is really good for you is not like. It's, it's not tasty. It's not, yeah, it's not, not tasty. Like, I'll give you, you know, an example. Moringa. I don't like moringa. I hate the taste of moringa. But it's one of the best plants that we have. What does it do? Moringa is a great immune booster. Moringa gives you nutrition. So for children who are um, ill, mm, can't eat, um, they need nutrition. Mm -hmm. Moringa. The, just the mar Helps. What, moringa? It's the moringa leaf. You know, make it as a tea, chop it up into your food. I don't like the taste of it, and I what do have a sweet like? tooth. I, mm. I, <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know how to describe it. It's not. No, is it bitter? It's, it's not. It's not. It's not bitter, but it's not. It's not sweet. Because I know there was a time where it was very popular, moringa tea. Moringa it's tea. Still, and, and it, it still needs to be because mm. um, we have it abundantly here. The West have now discovered moringa, and it's like. A, a thing now it's mm. huge so we have to take advantage we of it. have to take advantage and it grows so easily here okay. and it's everywhere you know so for me i hide it in my smoothies that's what i was even thinking about how about putting in okra soup you can you can you right can. yes you yeah, can. because with, with the you green chop it up yeah your okras or maybe if you have if you do your fufu and soup you know mm -hmm. if you're somebody who likes some greens and soup mm -hmm. chop it up throw it in mm. you know the thing to do is to get it inside you mm. and let it do and and not too denatured. You don't want to right. cook it out and spoil all its nutrients. Mm. You know, so, so just drop it in like and just, the end, just steam, just let it steam a, bit a little bit. In, in okay, now when you were talking, which like sort of like uh, ignited my mm. interest there, mm. you said things that you've been through that have brought you to where you are. Mm. So if I'm not going too deep, okay, I mean, I'm just no. wondering what have you been through um, that would make you realize that this is my is, purpose is and this I is what I'm to supposed to okay. be doing. You know, I talked about my dad being such a big meat eater. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. right. So we were really close. He said he was family. a medical doctor, right? He was a medical doctor. Okay. Yeah, okay. but a massive. A GP, a general. Um, he was a psychiatrist. Okay. Yeah, he okay. was a psychiatrist. Massive meat, meat eater. Mm. You know, massive meat eater. When I'm talking meat eater, you know, it's like eating Grilled. eating by the kilo. You know, yeah, Are you they, kidding you know, me? travel and you know when the steak is coming, they order you know by by the gram. You know, yeah. <laughs> So it was me, my brother, mom, and dad, mm -hmm. right? Um, in 2006, my brother had a car accident, mm. and he died. Mm. Now, a few months after that, that? Um, Junior died at 36. Mm. Okay. Now, so all of a sudden, you start to ask yourself, why? He's my younger brother. Why has he gone before me, etc.? You start yeah. to ask yourself questions. Okay. Few months after that, dad was diagnosed with liver, um, yes, it was liver cancer. Oh, okay. Gosh. So my whole family has had, um, it was diabetes, liver, quite a, f uh, quite a few of his siblings as well passed from, from liver disease. Oh, okay. wow. So you kind of now, you know that, okay, this is, okay, here it is again. Mm. You know, you're kind of like getting ready trying to find out, you know, how we can sustain things. And I remember at that time, a new drug had come out to help with liver disease, mm -hmm. you know, so he was on it, etc. So three years, 2009, you know, mm -hmm. we're like, um, all right, it's likely daddy will pass, you know, making arrangements for mom to come stay with us when the inevitable happens, etc. 
and then she dies. What? Before him? Before him. Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. So she passes, and then three months later, he dies. So immediately, you're asking yourself, Are okay, you kidding me? Have I done something wrong? Am I being punished? What's happening in God? So it's just you What's left? Happening? So it's just me left, right? So I think psychologically, that meat thing, you know, because in, the, in his, his last days, but he was asking he was the, himself. Do you think it was the meat? Not really. He asked, you know, he asked me. He's like, you know, he's like, yeah, do you think it's all? Do you think all that meat? But, that but does ate? meat affect your liver? No, 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 no. It, 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 it doesn't? It doesn't. Okay. It doesn't. This okay. is a personal conversation. Okay. Okay. You know, I'm not saying everybody stop no, 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 eating meat. No, no, of course, meat. Yes, of course. Yes, I yes. mean, but this is something yes, that we, um, we are learning. You know, so and we just want to know. He, he, he asked that question, you know, because it was his thing, mm. you know. Um, but of course, it's lifestyle as well. So, family gatherings, you know, would be lots of alcohol. It was a constant mm. beer drinker. So, it, it's, it's a lifestyle. So, I sat and asked myself, I'm like, is there anything that I could take from, from this, mm -hmm. you know? And what I realized is that why don't I use, why I, don't I use my story to help people? Yeah. Because even very I'm just wondering, what how happens, did you heal from that? It was hard. How did you it heal? It was hard. It was hard. It had to and be a change close? of very close. It had to be a change of mindset because I needed to find within myself the reasons why they had to leave when they did. But you can't. You can't find those reasons. I had to come up with reasons. I so those are reasons you reasons. gave yourself. Yes, because I'll give you one. Junior dies at thirty-six. Okay, um, I haven't just been in the medical um, arena. Um, the family set up the unicorn group. Dad bought a computer when I was going to university. Um, Julia and I started, and that's what um, Originate came from. Originate and, oh, okay. and Infant, yes, okay. it's a family business. Oh, wow. So okay. we did all the advertising, the marketing, really? all of that. Yes, we did that as well, do you see? So I needed to ask myself, I said at 36, Everything that he's achieved, everything that he achieved in those 36 years, mm -hmm. I can say somebody could have done that in 60. Somebody could have done that in 70 years. Right. True. So he came and did what he needed to do. So his time he, was his up. His time was up. Mm. His time was mm. up. Do you so think, do you think, it's, do you think it's okay. easier to take, you know, if, 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 you, if you have that mindset? It's, it's the only way to get through it. It's the only way to get through it. Because if you then realize, and it's also been the reason why I've done all the NLP um, training, all the pranic healing training, because you then realize that you are here for a reason. Christine, you've taken me so, so, so deep. We'll be right back. So we're back from the break and I was just thinking, right, with women, we love ourselves, we love mm. our bodies, we love our families, mm. our husbands, our children. Mm. What advice would you give to women watching now mm -hmm. as a natural way to take good care of your body? Because you did say that mm. you are what you eat, mm. you know, so what advice in, I mean, in 30 seconds, I don't know, if you were to say to women one thing, like to take good care of yourself, to be able to take care of your family and your children as well, what would you say? Every day must bring you joy. That's what I'll tell, that's what I'll say. Every single day must bring you joy. Because if you don't have that outlook, mm -hmm. if you're not doing things in a way that... But that's way, a mental that thing, right? It has to start from there. Right. It has to start right. from not there. Not really what you eat, 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 eat. But that, it starts it from starts there. It starts from your mind. Because if you know that today must bring me joy, Whatever it is that you're doing, the food that you're cooking, you know, it must bring joy. It must bring joy to you. It must bring joy to your family. Mm. It means you need to nourish them. Mm. You need to nourish. Yeah. So nourish. You, have to make sure you're, you're you need healthy. to make sure that it's healthy. Yes. You're it's nourishing. Nutritious. You need to be able to take care of yourself first. Because what a lot of women do, we forget about ourselves and we do everything else. If you have an empty bucket, if your bucket is empty, there is nothing that you can give. Yes. There's nothing in that bucket that you can go give to anybody else. Go deeper there. No, go, go a bit deeper there. <laughs> <laughs> I 
yeah, yeah, yeah. No, do you no, see what no. I, mean? I do get it. Okay. I do because on the plane, and some people don't understand. Some mm. people always laugh when the air hostess, you know, mm. air host, you know, as to what gets mm -hmm. to that point, it says, you know, you um, what, cover your, your, your nose first. first. Then people start giggling. First. But it's so, so, so true. Because to. if you cannot breathe, you cannot help you anybody, help anybody you else. die. You have, you have to, to take good you care. You have to take That's care of self love. Self-love. Oh. And I'll tell you something else. Self-love is not selfish. Mm. Yeah? Mm. The fact that we're taking time to help ourselves. No, at this point, I have to help. give you this gift. <laughs> okay, so I have this special gift oh. that I give to all my guests now. And really, this is what it is. I just really want to, like, you know, encourage. Oh, I didn't even so know what sweet. you were going to wear. This is that getting is so scary sweet. because you I see? just pick something, and when I come, it just matches with. Do you see? Do you see? Do you so see this now? is like, you know. Everything it's is working. Everything the is. universe is working together. I mean, God is amazing. Isn't God he? really is amazing. Isn't he? You know, I really am encouraging women to love. We have to love ourselves. We need to pick ourselves up. We need to gain mm. confidence. We need to, like, you know, look in the mirror and be able to tell yourself something good. You know, so you this is a gift worthy. for you. Thank you okay? so much. And every time you look at it, you yeah. squeeze it. I want you to tell yourself something good. I'm ready, so I'm take ready it to now. squeeze. Take I'm, ready, it now I'm ready to squeeze. And tell I'm us ready, one thing you love squeeze. about you. One thing I love about me. Wow. Mm. One. I know, you, I know you love a hundred mm. things, but tell us one. Um. Mm. Mm. Okay. <laughs> she's, thrown, she's thrown me with that one. Um, one thing, um, I think it's, it's the ability to organize, to organize um, what? Organize anything, mm. organize anything and everything. And I'll tell you why, um, we're in, and it's as technology progresses, everything, everything is Becoming, it's becoming there's yes, a lot lots yes. of information yes. we, we have so High much tech, to, we have so that. much to do with women we're doing house we're doing children we're doing um, relationships we're doing career mm. right if you're not able to compartmentalize if you're not able to organize if you're not able to structure you you you're, you'll find it really difficult to be able to you know uh, go through that maze. So that's one thing I'm happy that I'm able to so do. Yeah, you're a very good organizer. I'm a very good you organizer. You can put things together. I'll put things together. I'll stop, uh, I'll arrange in my head, I'll compartmentalize. I know this first, this, that. I multitask, wow. you know, wow. makes that's things a, a little easier. That's a little a easier. And you can me. acknowledge that. I can acknowledge that. Yes. I can acknowledge that. Um, uh, I, did, I did a little survey, and I think um, every woman should do that. Ask your friends and family. Ask them what they think you're good at. Okay. What they see, because you probably don't... I didn't see. Ah, okay. You don't see because yes, you're yes, in it. Yes, yes, Let them tell They'll you... They'll tell you... What you're good that's at. That's a good one. That's a good tip, yeah. ladies. And then just yes, sit back and yes. reflect on but it. But ask people you trust. Ask people you trust. Yeah, good people. The good people <laughs> around you. <laughs> And Yaz is yeah. good. Yeah. I have a yeah. gift here for yeah. you from Yaz. Oh, They're one wow. of our sponsors. Awesome. I have fantastic sponsors on this awesome. show. Awesome. Really. And Yaz have decided to give all my guests yeah. a gift. So Thank every you. week I have so many gifts to give to my guests. So they, they do Yaz sanitary um, mm. um, towels. towels. You know, they're very, very popular. They do wipes. They, they have toothpaste, they have washing powders. So this is a gift of different things of yes. Thank you so much. Some you much. can even give us gifts to other to people. Other. So this is just to say thank you so much. You've you really, you. really, really touched on some yeah. some some deep some mm. deep points today, and I'm, 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 I'm I always leave every week, and I feel like I have taken all the information seriously. Yeah. I'm, and, I'm really and you're, you're really blessed because you you've put yourself in a position where you're surrounded. We just the best. Women. We just the most women. amazing women, women in Ghana. I mean, I'm just too blessed. <laughs> Thank you so much. And even you watching, you're blessed as well because you're watching today's woman. We'll be right back. Thank you so much for joining us today on the Today's Woman Show. It's been so, so, so amazing. Now, as Ghanaians, part of our culture and, and a very, very popular 
part of our culture is food. We really, really like to eat good food. And I think one thing that we should all pick from our, our conversation today with our wedding woman is that you are what you eat. So think twice every time before you put whatever it is you're putting in your mouth. It's so, so important. Even as women, as mothers, as, you know, you, you know, nurturers, as carers, let's be mindful of the things that we are giving our children. It's so, so, so important. You are what you eat and you are today's woman. Don't miss it next week, Saturday, 11 a.m. on TV3 and DSTV channel 279. And this show won't be possible without my sponsors. Thank you so much to the Movin Pick Ambassador Hotel for this beautiful company comfortable set. Thank you so much to Yaz. Thank you to GTP and to Rene Q Love Pillow for pushing and pressing on for women to love themselves. Love yourself. You are today's woman. See you next week. Stay blessed.